All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this problem from your book. It's on page 251. It's practice D. And this asks you to uh, find the orbital speed of uh, the Magellan satellite. Uh, and it, get, it, it has you go through the, a problem in the book with Venus. And then uh, it wants to know the, the orbital speed and which is t i'm going to show you the equation in a minute and we've, we you do it in the book for venus and then we're going to practice doing earth jupiter and earth's moon the equation for this is t equals 2 pi and then you do square root radius cubed and then constant g and then the mass of the planet that's being orbited, MO. Okay, and then we just need to know some facts, and it's in your book on page 250, and I've uh, handed out one of those as well. So you shouldn't have any problem with that. And uh, what we want to know is the orbital speed, T. Okay, and that's not that hard to calculate. If we've been doing some how far away ones in class, radius, and those are a little bit harder because you've got to move all this stuff around. So let's just try one of these problems, plug in what we know. So if we did Earth, and the things we need to know about Earth are the radius of Earth, and then uh, we know G. G is 6 point, we'll just plug that in over here. So G is this constant, 6 point 673 times 10 to the 11th, negative 11th actually. Okay, and then uh, the mass of Earth, m of e, and that's going to be, uh, we look in our book, it gives us 5.97. Pretty big number here, times 10 to the 24th. So that's the mass. And uh, the only thing you need now is the radius of the Earth, so R of E. And then we add it to whatever the altitude is. The thing to remember about the radius is it's going to give you in meters. So you're going to need to count, make sure you convert um, both into meters. So we look at the Earth at 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. Okay. And then we have the altitude, uh, the radius, that's how far away Magellan is. And it's 361, I think it's kilometers. So in the end, we're going to make it 3.61 times 10 to the fifth meters. I think that should work. I'll just double check. All I always do it is just write out the kilometer, do a quick conversion. 361 kilometers. And then we know... I might actually be a little off on this. We know one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. So we're going to add three zeros to this. One, two, three, and then we got 361. So 361,000, and we go one, two, three, four, five. I got it right. So that is the, this should be now all the information we need. And then we just plug it into our uh, trusted calculator and get done. So the radius, though, is one thing we're going to have to add, because we have the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6, and we're going to add it to the radius of how far above the Earth the satellite is. And if we use our calculator, I'm not going to show you the one on here, because we need some scientific notation, but I'm just going to do it for you. We end up with 6.74, so the radius total is 6.74 times 10 to the 6th. 
So this is one we're going to plug into there. So then we just use our uh, data. So t, that's what we're trying to figure out. What's the orbital speed? And then um, 2 pi. We'll wait for that. And then we're going to do a square root here. But it's going to be r squared. So it's going to be 6.74. Times 10 to the 6. It's going to be a big number here because we're going to cube it. Then we're going to divide by these things on the bottom 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then the mass of the Earth, which is going to be ginormous, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Okay, now we have all our data. We can pretty much do our calculations now, and we'll be done. So on the top, I'm just going to use my calculator for that. 6.74, 6, I'm going to cube it, and I end up with... I'm going to put it down here, 3.06, oh, let's fix that, times 10 to the 20th. Okay, that's my top. And then I'm going to divide by this thing here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take 6.673 times 5.97. And that gives me 39.8. Yeah, let me fix that. So 39.8. And then we just do the tenth, we just add exponents, negative eleventh, the twenty-fourth, that's going to give me thirteen. And then I just do this calculation here, and then I could even change this to a number that's reasonable, like 3.98, but I don't really have to. So I go 3.06, I'm going to divide these, and then I'm going to subtract 20 minus 13. So I know in the end my answer is going to be 10 to the seventh. Is 20 minus 13. So then I just get my answer here. 3.06 divided by 39.8 and I get 0 0.0768. And again, that's not a number that's um, to the correct power, a number between 1 and 10, so I just move it. 1, 2, that's going to give me 0.768. I'll rewrite it in just a minute. I made this 2, I made this bigger by, uh, I moved the decimal twice, so I make this smaller. So it's going to be to the 5th then. And it's going to be 7.68. And I'm going to do the square root of that. So square root, 7.68, x minus fifth. That then gives me 876 is my answer. Okay. And then I just need to times it by 2, times it by pi. That gives me 5.51. And that's going to be times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. And then uh, that should be the answer. 5.51 times 10 to the 3rd. And we just make sure we got it right. And that's seconds. And then if we wanted to put it in uh, days and all that kind of stuff, we could do that by dividing. 
So we know it's all seconds and 3600 seconds in an hour. So we just take that. 5.51 exponent fifth divided by 3600. Okay. So 150 divided by 24. We get 6.4 days is what it would be in days. Which kind of makes more sense. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about this. That's how you solve that one, and the other ones are just the same. You just plug in, figure everything out, multiply by 2 pi, and then it gives you the answer in seconds. So let me know if you have any questions on that. I'd be glad to go over some more. And that's it.